it has been a long, long time. I'm still reading and I'm so happy that it is Victober. So I am, uh, I have been listening to Jane Eyre on audiobook. Um, on Audible, there's an Audible only narrated by Tandy Newton, which is really, really good. I'm almost finished with that. Um, it's kind of funny because it's, so I, I read Jane Eyre for the first time, I think two years ago. Um, 2018 was when I first discovered booktube and so it was like my first Victober ever I read Jane Eyre um, and so I've been listening to it because I wanted to be participating in Victober but I had some other books that I had to read I had book club last night so I had a couple books to finish for that um, and so uh, so yeah so I've been listening to Jane Eyre um, on audiobook and then I wanted to do the group read Shirley by Anne Bronte or by Charlotte Bronte, but I could not find a copy of it. I tried at um, a couple different used bookstores uh, locally, and then there's actually a brand new uh, new bookstore, um, like the only like independent bookstore now in my area, uh, which I'm super super psyched about. It's Ruby's uh, Ruby's bookstore, and Ruby is a beautiful golden retriever, um, and I'm like super stoked that that place is there. Um, and but they don't have they don't have used books and they didn't have a copy even a new copy um of it but i have just been uh golfing up in auburn with a friend of mine um it's been like the perfect morning um it's just after 12 now we started off the day with nine holes of golf and then we had a beautiful breakfast at a nice little place in auburn and then to winston smith books which is a really, really great uh, used bookstore in Auburn. And um, let me know. Do you know? Do you know where the where the name Winston Smith comes from? It's a literary uh, name. Um, and then right next door to that is this really cool place. Cherry is it Cherry Records? Yeah, Cherry Records um, used record store. So anyway, I did end up finding a copy of Shirley by Charlotte Bronte. It's in the Oxford World Classics edition, which aren't my favorite I don't I don't really like the typeset it's just it's kind of cramped um like the margins are too wide and I, I wish the margin the center margin was was wider but um it's fine I have a copy of it it is a it is a long one it is over 600 pages so yeah six six forty six uh, of cramped <laughs> text. Um, but I'm looking forward to reading that. Um, and then, because we went to the record store, um, I got some Ray Charles and some Roy Orbison. So, kind of my plan for uh, the next two to three hours at least is I have some work that I need to get done, but I'm going to spend that time put the vinyl on and uh and sit there get my work done so then I can get into some reading um otherwise I just started last night The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes which is a short short story collection and then um I do have this uh Wilkie Collins The Law and the Lady which is like um like a, like a new marriage that was uh frowned upon and then uh, there seems to be some sort of um, identity, a question of identity with uh, with the new husband. So um, that may be for later in the in the month. Um, but yeah, I'm back. I'm back. I hope I hope to be putting out videos more frequently. I think vlog style is just going to suit me better. Um, vlog style or tags rather than wrap ups. Um, I have just been finding that um, over the last several months when I would think about doing a wrap-up, the idea of, of doing that just basically made me not want to do the video. So hence, I have not been making videos. So here we are, it's Victober. It's time to read and it's time to talk about books. Okay, so I finished my work for now and I'm about to start Shirley. I forgot to mention when I was talking about reading Jane Eyre though, or listening to the audiobook of Jane Eyre, it's cracking me up because um, as I said, I read it, uh, I read the physical book uh, like two years ago. And if someone was listening to the audiobook, this at least this version of the audiobook, and they'd never read the book before or didn't know anything about the the dear reader references, they'd be going, "Who is this Rita? Why is she telling Rita this story?" Uh, just because of the accent, it sounds like dear Rita. It's even it's even tripped me up a few times where I'm like, "Rita, oh dear reader, okay, carry on." So I'm about to start with Shirley and hopefully this goes well. I don't know that anything could ever live up to Jane Eyre, um, but uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna give it a go. 
I also have my ASMR room there and my doggie, Stevie. Tiger Tut. So it's now Sunday morning and I have my coffee here, my Dharma mug. Um, so I didn't take you along with me last night basically because it was dark, but I got to do, oh, hi buddy. Um, I'm in a club called Active 2030 Club and we do, uh, basically we exist to do fundraisers to support local kids. And, but sometimes we just do like social fun things. So we did social a social distancing drive-in double feature last night. So it was very uh, autumnal Halloween inspired. So we saw Coco and Hocus Pocus and it was a ton of fun. And so we just had like parked near each other. And for the most part, we just had our windows down in our cars yeah. with, the, with the volume turned all the way up. And then we had chairs that we were sitting kind of in between and around the cars. So we were kind of near each other. We could talk to each other um, and hang out like in before in, in between the movies. But we were we were spread apart. Um, and so that was a lot of fun. It got quite chilly, but like by California standards, because it's been super hot here. It's supposed to go back to the 90s next week. Um, so, I mean, it was like in the 80s yesterday. But then, I mean, it's so sad that like this was actually like really cold, but it was like 66 degrees. Like... <laughs> I know that's not cold, but when it hasn't been that cold, it's a big difference. So anyway, um, you may notice some changes here. The couch is in a different room because big life change has happened and my parents have moved in. So um, we've re re or rearranged some things at the moment and Stevie's still whiny. And there's even a new doggy, Heidi. He's around here somewhere, so you'll you'll see her eventually. So that's why there's a recliner in the entry hall at the moment, um, just because it's it, it can't get to where it's going to be living uh, at the moment. So anyway, I am going to just enjoy some cozy reading time. I've got Harry Potter ASMR on, and then I'm currently I didn't set myself up very good to talk about this. I'm currently reading three books, so completely nothing to do with Victober. I'm in the middle of Attica Locke's Bluebird Bluebird, um, which is the first in the, I don't know what like the series is called. It's the Darren Matthews Texas Ranger series, I'll call it. Um, and I'd seen this on several other channels, and it was in the new Ruby's bookstore, the new bookstore that I was telling you about, so that was the first thing I, that I bought from there. Um, I'm trying to not really buy books right now. Um, I'm really trying not to buy anything right now, but, um, I wanted to support the new local bookstore because we, it's, we haven't had an independent bookstore. Um, and then I made it through the first chapter of Shirley yesterday. Haven't met Shirley yet. And then I'm also reading, um, Adventure of Sherlock Holmes. And so, um, this is actually Book of the Month Club in the 90s, I believe it was, did this really cool special edition set of uh, Sherlock Holmes books. So the dust jacket obviously isn't on this, but there's a whole bunch of them and they all have different paisley print spines on the dust jackets. And so they look really cool. And I got the whole thing for like $12 or something like that at my, my local used bookstore. <clears throat> So anyway, so I think I'm going to start off with the reading the first, um, I had just started the first story in this. So this is a series of Sherlock Holmes stor short stories. Um, and so I'm going to finish the first short story in this before I probably read at least a chapter in Shirley. Stevie is hungry, so I can show you this room. This is also a combination of like the kids have been here <clears throat> and we haven't exactly finished picking up stuff from the kids and then... This is actually the other dog, Heidi's toys. So my parents' sectional, which has reclining uh, ends, now lives in this room. And 
Stevie needs to eat. Oh, he needs water too. <gasps> Here's Heidi. Ah, ah, that's not yours. Hi, baby. Hi. Ah, ah. Say it. Say it. Good girl. Okay, go away. Go away. This is Stevie's time. Stevie, sit. You already are sitting, huh? Good boy. Well, okay, Heidi can have that. Okay, go ahead. Heidi, get out of here. Come on. That's not yours. Go. Take a toy. Here. Take mama a toy. Here you go. You don't want that one? Okay. All of her toys have names. I don't know what that was. I guess while I'm at it, um, I can show you the parts that I've been trying to avoid showing you. So this couch is not going to live here forever. I'm kind of deciding whether this couch, which was originally my sister's, is going to go back to their house. I just keep that sheet there to keep Stevie from completely destroying it. His hair just like really sticks to that fabric. Um, same as with that chair there. But anyway, this is all quite a mess right now. I have kind of tentatively, not tentatively, the kids' toy stuff. Oh. Learning playground. Learning playground. This thing is on. Let's turn that off. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So there's a combination of things that are going to live here and things that just, like, you haven't figured out what to do with because I've had to clear other areas. So this is just a bunch of, like, pillows and blankets and uh, a comforter for a bed that is no longer here. Um, and then this is kind of, like, the kids' toy area. And then this is, uh, was the dining room. Um, right now it's got a bunch of my parents like coats and like formal kind of stuff that we don't know what we're gonna do with quite yet. Um, their piano, um, her like hutch thingy. But actually the plan for this room is gonna be, we're actually gonna put in a set of French doors. Let me back up so you can see what I'm talking about. So this big, opening there there's going to be um a set of like it'll be like framed in and there will be a set of french doors there and then that'll be kind of like their den or at least my mom's den so she can go in there and do her music uh tv's in there um so she can go in there and watch her news channel um or do whatever she wants to do and um not feel like she's cramping on my style or anything like that which i have not felt at all but um and then this is becoming one of my cozy reading spots. And that's kind of my normal, <laughs> the baby, the two-year-old, who you haven't seen in a long time, she's now two, has been really loving this Hogwarts uh, playset. And then there's a Quidditch, a Quidditch one there too. Okay, it's time to read. I'm all sweaty because I just helped my mom move some furniture, but I just finished the first story, A Study in Bohemia. A Study in Bohemia? A Scandal in Bohemia. And from the outset, from what uh, Watson is telling us, we know that it involves um, this woman. What's her first name? Adler. I'm terrible at names. Something Adler. Irene Adler. And we know that Sherlock is very um, intrigued, like almost infatuated with this woman from the outset. Um, and so this mystery is going to involve her in some way. So it involves her and the uh, King of Bohemia. Um, and it ended up having quite a fun little kind of twist at the ending. So that was really nice. But I'm going to um, move on to Shirley now. And um, so far, I'm not like super into it or anything. I, mean, I only read the first chapter. And it's about um, kind of like clergy and clergy in training uh, kind of thing. And these couple of young guys are going to be sent off to go to, um, to a mill. I don't remember why they're going to this mill, um, but they're basically being sent off on an errand. And I imagine at some point we're gonna meet Shirley. So uh, I'm just waiting for the story to kind of kick off. Okay, I have to share this line. Um, so it was just Malone, one of the curates that was sent to go to the mill. And he and Mr. Moore, who runs the mill, um, are having a conversation. They're both single and not interested in marriage. And this is what Malone, uh, I believe is Irish, has to say about, about, about marriage. I mean, marriage in the vulgar weak sense, as a mere matter of sentiment. Two beggarly fools agreeing to unite their indigence by some fantastic tie of feeling. Humbug. I have a feeling that, uh, that this 
that this feeling is going to be, this, you, these sentiments about marriage are going to be tested. Okay, so it's like six days, six or seven days later. It's Saturday. I can't remember the last time I actually updated. I intended that for just to be like a weekend vlog, but then I never ended it. Um, so I'm still reading Shirley and I'm loving it. So I am like 170 or so pages into it. I have not met Shirley yet, still. Caroline uh, Hellstone is our main character. She's the, the niece of uh, Mr. Hillstone, who's a, a, a pastor. I, the, the Church of England, like, clergy um, hierarchy really doesn't make any sense to me. I've never, like, researched it to try to learn it. Um, all I know of it is what I read in, um, in English literature, basically. So he's some sort of clergyman. And um, we're basically just finding out about uh, different families. Um, in the town so far, um, in this little mill town, and she is like a distant cousin of Mr. Moore, who owns the the mill, and uh, he and his sister live together, and she is very much fond of him, but he uh, has no desire to ever be married, and the last conversation that we just had was between a new family we've just been introduced to, the Yorks, between Mr. York and, um, and Mr. Moore, the mill owner, and uh, he basically was saying that the only way that he would ever possibly be married, and this is really kind of upon Mr. York's insistent questioning, would be that it would have to be a young, beautiful woman with money. And kind of the underlying uh, socioeconomic turmoil that's going on right now is that it's in the middle of the uh, French Revolution, and so commerce has really been affected. And so like foreign trade has really been affected uh, due to the French Revolution. And oh, I can't remember what it's called, the something order. So I think they're not, he's not even able to like ship to the States right now. And then um, the other thing that's going on uh, a little bit more, like much more locally, the local conflict is that um, machines are coming in to use more. And so there has been actual like violence and vandalism um, of Mr. Moore's, uh, these frames that he's brought in to help to, to mechanize and speed up the, the process of making cloth. So it's affecting the livelihoods of the people in the town, the people that worked for him. Um, so there's like this struggle between you want the people to be able to work, but also he's not going to be able to make it in business um, to stay afloat. Like he's barely afloat in business right now uh, because of the larger economic status. Um, so he has to continue to advance. So that's kind of like what's going on in the background. In the meantime, we have Caroline, you see really is kind of in love with Mr. Moore and he sees her more uh, kind of like a sister. Um, they are, they're distant cousins. Um, and then I believe what's going to happen is that Carol, or that Shirley rather, is going to be this, this young, beautiful, wealthy person that's going to, uh, woman that's going to kind of entice Mr. Moore to get married. And so we're going to have, I don't know, maybe a love triangle, some sort of conflict there. But there's a lot of book to go, uh, but I'm just really, really enjoying it. I'm, I'm really happily surprised as to how much I really am enjoying it. Otherwise, completely different from Victober at all. I'm listening to... Uh, what is it called? It's the new, the new Ken Follett book, uh, the new, uh, it's like a prequel to Pillars of the Earth in the, the, so now it would be chronologically the first in the Kingsbridge saga, I guess. It's taking place in the year, like, I think we're in 997 right now, and, uh, it's quite, it's quite interesting. So, yeah, I love Ken Follett and, uh, and the series in particular. So that's what I'm doing, and I hope to make a good dent in Shirley right now. So I'm going for a walk right now, obviously. Um, I'm about a half mile from my house, so I'm going to go home and uh, then drive over to the gym, get a workout in, and then hopefully get some good reading done. I read maybe 20 pages this morning, but I kept getting distracted. So I'm hoping for a good little couple chunks of reading this afternoon and I would like to, to at least make it you know over 200 pages in uh, in Shirley today. It's Sunday morning now. <clears throat> Froggy voice. Um, 
I almost made it to page 200 yesterday in Shirley, um, but didn't quite get there because I ended up reading another story in uh, Sherlock Holmes, The Adventures of Sher Sherlock Holmes, which was really good. It was the second story. Um, what was that one called? The Red-Headed League, which was a really good one. And what, st what strikes me every time I read Sherlock Holmes is not how brilliant Sherlock Holmes is, but how brilliant Arthur Conan Doyle is, because he's the one writing it. Like, where does he come up with this stuff? I would love to know more about him as a person. Um, but so, enjoying going through this slowly. And then also, I was watching baseball, game seven of the uh, American League Championship Series yesterday. Um, so I didn't read as much of Shirley as I would have liked to, um, but I'm going to do that right now. So our friend Caroline is really in a bad way right now. Her uncle just really doesn't seem to care about like her happiness. Um, he's just there to kind of shelter her and feed her, it seems, um, and make sure that she's an upstanding young lady, I suppose. Um, and she is really in love with with Mr. Moore, but due to a, a political issue, um, Mr. Hellstone, Caroline's uncle, has forbidden her from going to see her cousins, um, uh, the Moors. And so uh, she's constantly longing for him and almost kind of like spying on him, going to see his house just to see the light come on, to know that he's there and hope to see his shadow past the window. So she's really, really pining for him and is crying all night. And she's now uh, just looking so uh, so sickly, uh, because she's, she's not eating and she's pale. Um, the people actually think that she might die. She's not actually sick. She's like, she's basically heartbroken and just, she's really depressed is what she is. So I hope things turn around for Caroline soon, but, um, I have, I have a feeling that with, with the appearance of Shirley, whenever that's going to be, I don't think things are going to get any better for Caroline. Literally the next page, Shirley's name is finally mentioned. Um, Caroline's uncle wants her to come with her, uh, calling on someone. They're going to Fieldhead to visit Miss Shirley Kielder. She's come from Yorkshire. I believe they're in West Yorkshire. <laughs> So it's Sunday night now, uh, got some laundry done, went to church, watched football and baseball, and um, I'm about 230 pages or so into Shirley at this point, and I'm really, really loving it. Shirley and Caroline are becoming really good friends, they became very fast friends, and, and it's the first time Caroline has ever really had, had someone like that in her life. Um, so it's just going, it's just going wonderfully, and I, I just have a feeling though Things are gonna go wrong. A man is gonna come in between them. I think it's I think it's Mr. Moore, uh, probably like I suspected before. Um, but I'm really really enjoying this. So, thank you, Charlotte Bronte, for yet another uh, beautiful beautiful book. Uh, I look forward to reading, obviously, to finishing this one and then to reading more um, of her work. Fortunately, there is more to read. So I'm gonna end the vlog here getting ready for bed. I'm, well, I'm in bed, as you can see. Um, I'm going to read a bit more of this, and hopefully I'll get this vlog edited and up tomorrow. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, who is your favorite Bronte, or what is your favorite Bronte book? Um, as of right now, I would say Jane Eyre is my favorite, but I'm really, really loving Shirley. Thanks for watching. See you around the tubes. Mm -hmm.